Hey everyone, Casualties of Gaming here, coming at you with a video uh, that's going to be a little different than what I've been doing. Um, it's not going to be like the retro handheld emulation fodder that uh, I've been doing a lot of recently. We're not necessarily we're not moving away from this content or anything like that. Um, I've actually just came into possession of a new handheld that I'm going to be hopefully doing a review on soon. So. Um, but anyway, uh, what we're talking about today kind of has to do with emulation. Um, so, basically what's going on, I was made aware of this through uh, a YouTuber by the name of Oh No, It's Alex. Um, and uh, he does salt content, which he's more popular for, but he does a lot. He's done emulation videos and stuff in the past and some Steam Deck guides that actually helped me out quite a bit when I first got a Steam Deck. Uh, so, shout out to him. Uh, I'll probably link his YouTube channel in the description. I can't imagine there's people that have heard of him that or, or, that have heard of me that haven't heard of him, but I could, you never know. Maybe I'll uh, find one of his Steam Deck videos and link it, actually. Um, but uh, basically what's going on here is this is a tool for uh, taking PlayStation 2 games and making native PC ports out of them. So, um, what you you guys may or may not, if you play primarily on PC like I do, you may already be aware of N64 Recomp. Uh, I know that with this tool, they've been able to do uh, Orcarina of Time, both Master Quest and non-Master Quest, Majora's Mask, um, Mario 64, and Star Fox, I believe. I have not played the Star Fox yet, um, but I've played the other three, and they're they're really really great um they do everything from like cheats uh with ocarina of time that annoying owl you can make it so uh if you just quickly thumb through his dialogue and then hit a without you know paying attention to the question it doesn't matter it flips the answers um there's a bunch of quality of life improvements in the games but uh anyway uh 4k textures 120 uh fps that kind of stuff so I imagine that's kind of where this may be headed. Uh, there is a, an, an Xbox 360 project like this, which maybe I'll do a video on too. But if we go over here to GitHub, I've already got this pulled up, the PS Retro X. Um, it looks like this thing's been in development for about five months. Um, now, I am not a coder, so I am probably like going to seem kind of stupid when I'm covering this a little bit. I know what C++ is. It's obviously a coding tool, but PS Retro X is a C++ application designed to reverse engineer PlayStation 2 games. The primary goal of this project is to extract and process game files, enabling native PC ports of PS2 games. Uh, PS Retro X includes built-in tools for decompilating and decoding game assets such as audio, 3D models, source. So uh, basically, they reverse engineer the games and then recompile the code into a PC port with better features. The thinking behind this is unlike ROMs and emulators where there's kind of like a legal gray area, uh, since you're reverse engineering it and then recompiling the code, in theory, it would make it legal. I don't know about all countries. Here in the United States, reverse engineering is 100% completely legal. Uh, in fact, uh, the whole uh, Tangan thing in the early 90s where they were trying to uh, reverse engineer the NES lockout chip, uh, their legal defense was that they had reverse engineered it, and if they'd done that, that would have been you know completely fine. But turns out that they actually went into the patent office and uh, copied the code or the layout for the chip um, and reverse engineered it that way there was some uh like throwaway files or something that were still on the um that were in the chip that they used that shouldn't have been in there if they reverse engineered it it was the whole thing um had to do with the nes and making games because nintendo were being really stingy about who could make games which after the video game crash of the 80s i don't necessarily blame them but uh anyway that's irrelevant and i'm babbling um, so this project, I think, is really cool. Obviously, if you look at these figures, we're not anywhere near, uh, you know, completion on this. Uh, the 1.0 is at 8%. Uh, the MIPS disassembly, which I'm assuming is what decompiles it. Uh, you can educate me on that in the comments if you want. Is at 30%. The recompiling tool is at 15%. The engine itself is still at 0 
So, yeah, there's a long ways to go on this. But, I mean, if they've come this way, this long, and or uh, if they've come this far in five months, maybe, I don't know, looking at these numbers, I don't know, a year and a half away? Eh, that's probably wishful thinking. I don't know how long the N64 version of this um, took. But anyway, I thought this was really interesting. There hasn't been a lot of news topics on retro handhelds and stuff that I've found super interesting. Uh, but yeah, I thought this was really cool. Um, if you like stuff on this, I'm going to try to cover more stuff on this and see how it does. If you like emulation videos, retro handhelds, all that sort of crap, uh, like, comment, subscribe. Uh, I've been Casualties of Gaming, and I will talk to you later.